Good day to all of you. Uh, today I'm here with my colleague Thomas Mikolaitis. Uh, we will present you the use cases. Uh, I call them September edition. Uh, like last year, uh, we were presenting uh, monthly editions. So this year we are planning to do so also, if obviously, if you will find interesting. So 81, 81, this is the number which is constantly growing. This is the number describing how many different use cases we have written and special thanks to our content writer. So uh, we have written more than 81 uh, use cases already and you can find all of them in our website. So do not hesitate, trust me, check them. Check them right now or after the webinar and you know that this place, the website, the use cases uh, is the place where all the magic happens when you are thinking about new projects, about new possibilities. And today, again, we are going to present you six different use cases, case studies, which most of them were made by our clients. In the end, you will have a chance to hear my colleague, uh, Thomas Mikolaitis, who is, uh, let's say, the head of remote management system, the commercial part. Uh, he will present you a few RMS case studies. So just feel free to ask any question. Uh, this webinar will take approximately 30 minutes and I will begin with probably one of the most interesting uh, use cases is the cleaning business. Uh, and you know that business of public areas and retail cleaning services has always been challenging due to multiple reasons. And the reasons are that high rate staff turnover, handling client complaints and managing supply stock, which all account for time and money resources. For example, regardless of how full soap or toilet paper dispenser is, it gets replaced with a new one to ensure it lasts until the staff gets back to the facility next time. And what may seem like uh, well, such a tiny detail is that sometimes it represents thousands of pounds of wasted paper products. Therefore, some of, uh, let's say, some of the most common difficulties are to schedule, assign workload for cleaners, for regular check-ins in various buildings. And you know that cleaning businesses, come on, have hundreds of, uh, hundreds of offices, hundreds of places where they need to send their, uh, you know, staff. Uh, and obviously to, tack, to track their work progress is one of the most, uh, needed uh, features. Uh, so this topology, this use case was made by one of our clients called Mero, Mero Technologies. Uh, it is an IoT company providing intelligent labor allocation and supply ut utilization to commercial property managers. Uh, and this is done by smart sensor technology. You know that their vision is to optimize the way buildings perform day-to-day -day cleaning maintenance. Installing Mero's paper and let's say traffic sensor can help with supply and traffic monitoring. The installation is effortless. Come on, everyone can do that. Anyone can do it. Uh, just by gluing the sensors with an industrial grade adhesive in dispensers or on walls, that's it. It does not require any special training and takes less than 30 seconds to complete uh, the whole process. And what makes the solution so scalable and straightforward is bringing an independent LTE network into buildings with one of our products, RET240 cellular router. And this router, the RET240 receives the data from sensors and securely transmits it um, further to the Mero cloud for further processing. Building owners, property managers, or cleaning staff can review the data uh, via dashboards and make decisions uh, on optimizing uh, staff schedules and stocking cleaning products to reduce waste in both areas. So the benefits of using our products in similar use cases or this particular use case case study is that RT240 is small and easily integrated into existing infrastructure. Also, RT240 is quick to deploy, allowing for a wire-free setup um, that is much faster, easier, and more economical to set up. Furthermore, setting it up doesn't require special training, as mentioned uh, before, and is independent of gaining internet connectivity access from the building owners. 
another use case and another challenge in people counting is with the safety in public transportation and you know that it comes from unpredictable occupancy which makes it difficult to ensure uh, the distance requirements are met and i'm talking about COVID 19. it is necessary uh, not just to accurately and reliably count the passengers on the vehicle in real time but also to be able to communicate this information to the outside world for analytics for example for data, additional data, and to enable the passengers to efficiently plan their trips. Come on, the connection continuity is, is a must in such a solution and the network should work reliably in a moving vehicle all around the city. So a company which managed to do it is called Guglielmo, it was founded in Italy in 2004. It has created an anti-COVID people counting system, which officially became a part of public transport network services. Uh, people counter avoids cr overcrowding by counting onboarding passengers through a set of six, six people counting sensors installed at each door. And the data is then pushed via MQTT to the Teltonica Network's router RT955, as in the topology showed. On the RT955 MQTT broker, the real-time occupancy data is buffered and provided through a dedicated private Wi-Fi network to the driver's tablet for monitoring of the passenger flows. At the same time, on the other side, the data is sent to Google Elmo's uh, uh, cloud via MQ MQTT protocol uh, over the 4G connection that RT955 has. In the cloud, the data is used both for analytical purposes and to inform the passengers regarding their occupancy in real time via mobile application. This allows to reliably and precisely estimate the real time and predictive occupancy of the trams. Here you can see uh, two pictures, uh, how it looks like in the real life, not so beautiful, but works perfectly, trust me. And RT955, you know, that is dual uh, SIM 4G router, uh, which means that the connection continuity, um, uh, let's say, can be ensured by using two different operator SIM cards. Furthermore, it comes with RTOS, our operating system, uh, which includes professional features like MQTT, for example, firewall and multiple VPN services for security. As all our products, it has integrated hotspot functionality, offering flexible configuration options for various access rights, data limits, and speeds. Also, it comes with a Wi-Fi, uh, which can work in access point or station mode or the both modes at the same time. The third topology, which I wanted to show you and just to describe uh, the case study is with the gas stations. The connectivity challenges are many, many of them. Uh, to begin with, they usually belong to a chain. So the con connectivity model needs to be universal to fit various locations and environments. Uh, besides the support of such change, chains is usually, uh, you know, they are centralized. Hence having a unified connectivity solution eases up the support procedures and reduces the resources required for IT support. Also, it makes the time to set up, um, sorry, just skipped one slide. <laughs> it happens, it happens. Also, it makes the time to set up uh, a new station much shorter, simpler, and more, uh, let's say, cost efficient. And uh, here in this topology, RT X14 is the central piece of the solution. It has CAT 12, LTE module, which can uh, reach uh, speeds up to 600 megabit per sec, which is enough to serve the varied needs of uh, devices used in similar environments. Uh, surveillance cameras inside and outside of the petrol station, point of sale, POS terminals, digital signage screens, um, you know, that requires quite a speedy connect connection, uh, network stability and broad data bandwidth. 
these devices connect to the router via Ethernet cables through five gigabit ports available on this router. Uh, product scanners inside the gas station tablets and other wireless devices used for work purposes connect to a private Wi-Fi network uh, for security reasons, for sure. Uh, also, there is a separate public guest Wi-Fi created for the visitors. A wide selection of uh, VPN services ensures that the most varied security requirements and preferences are met. So what are the benefits of using Teltonica Networks RTX14 in this solution is that it offers speedy connection with a download speed up to 600 megabits, as mentioned before. Also, it has upload speeds up to 150 megabit per sec. And as most of our seller products, it gives a quick and straightforward setup for an all-in-all, all-in-one uh, all solution uh, to connect, uh, let's say, ecosystem of multiple devices. Without all of this, it supports remote management system uh, or RMS and the monitoring via it, or even a variety of third-party IoT platforms if needed. Uh, the challenge in creating the best routes for public transport is in finding ways to take measures that enable efficiently uh, gathering and what's it, analyzing information on the road traffic structure and passenger journeys between given regions. And you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about public bus, public transportation. And besides, there also exists an, as let's say a compatibility issue with various types of legacy devices found on the buses and customizability to meet the variety requirements of different clients. So this uh, topology, this case study was made again with one of our clients called MBIC. And our partner, MBIC, offers IT solution development services empowering R&D teams and projects by presenting high-quality IT experience and full-stack services. Given a task by one of their clients, MBIC designed a platform for optimizing public transport based on the actual data. DSDI flow is a journey analysis system that enables gathering and analyzing information on the road traffic structure. The analysis is performed by a small but powerful RET 955 device, which are installed in vehicles and bus stops that capture and analyze anonymous Wi-Fi signals emitted by a passenger smartphone. The collected data may include passenger traffic between regions with date, time, days of the week, and bus lines. It may also calculate load percentage in regions, uh, let's say, in terms of the given bus lines, uh, passenger share for bus stops, and the number of passenger journeys between specific destination with a list of bus lines. And RT955, which was used in this success story, is one of our best-selling products for its uh, various serial interfaces, rugged industrial design, and other features that includes, for example, automatic Wi-Fi connection. Furthermore, you know that our product's philosophy is reliable, secure, and easy to use. The same applies to this product, which is offering easy integration and possibility to make a customizable solution based on OpenWRT. The fifth topology, which I wanted to present you today is uh, about traceability. Should it be food, chemical products, or even a new topic uh, vaccine? When the temperature requirements are not met even for a short period, the goods are no longer safe and needed to be uh, discarded. As this results also in financial losses, the businesses are interested in you know, possibilities to track uh, the supply chain for accountability and prevention reasons. If uh, I know if a carrier uh, made uh, everything go wrong or, or another person or whatever. Besides with various, uh, with products like you know vaccines, there is a lot of uh, planning involved due to required follow-up doses that are also a time bound. Such goods uh, are also quite attractive target for theft or fraud. 
tracking the location and movement of them is therefore um, well, essential to avoid losing or misplacing the shipment. All of these processes require effective tools and systems in place. So the topology looks simple as this, and efficient tracking, you know, that in the supply chain can be ensured by installing Bluetooth sensors on the pallets or on the boxes where the products are being transported. Depending on what kind of metrics need to be uh, monitored, there is a choice of, uh, let's say, different Bluetooth sensors like ID for equipment tracking, T for temperature, RHT for temperature and humidity, and others. You can check them in our website, by the way. So uh, our products, the X-Series products, supports up to 200 such sensors uh, that can be connected to, again, dual SIM or the X11 cellular router for tracking. The router collects the information from the sensors via Bluetooth and sends it to further, uh, let's say, further to the IoT platform via MQTT or HTTPS protocols. The router is equipped with GNSS capabilities, so it can track events happening at an exact specific location. Using the sensor data allows to set up notifications whenever something out, let's say, of the ordinary occurs. For example, if the temperature falls behind or gets close to the certain measure, uh, the system will warn you, warn the employees and the situation can be uh, rectified to avoid bigger losses, or an alert may be set up for, I don't know, whenever an object changes its location or leaves the premises. In general, GNSS allows to easily trace the goods inside the warehouse or during its journey through the whole supply chain. As you know, RTX 11, uh, as mentioned before, can connect up to 200 uh, Bluetooth sensors and the pairing process uh, takes seconds using NFC enabled device like a smartphone. Furthermore, RTX 11 supports GNSS services, which I was descri describing in the last slide. So just you can track the exact location where I know a certain event will occur. And the last use case from my side before my colleague Thomas Mikolaitz will take over is very interesting. I love it, I, I like it, trust me. And uh, it's called Ancient Underwater Treasures. Everyone loves treasures, just nobody tells that. Although the underwater world, uh, you know, that offers a lot to be seen. You remember Titanic, for example? Underwater museums are not a common phenomenon. One of the main problems that uh, withheld the implementation of underwater museums was related to the complicated uh, protection of such entities. Usually in ancient uh, shipwrecks, only the cargo is preserved, which is mainly um, for such treasures are attractive to thieves as they um, are easy to steal and quick to sell. Therefore, before showcasing these objects to the visitors, a security system uh, needs to be installed that is self-powered, remotely controlled, and connected to the network 24-7. NUS, a company which installed this solution, the system is an innovative system prototype that can, let's say, continuously monitor an underwater area of interest. It combines artificial intelligence for the marine and the diving industry, eliminate, eliminating the need for a human operator to perform tasks like object detection, image classification, monitoring, and others, you know, hundreds of others. The new system allows continuous monitoring and protection of uh, an underwater site using machine learning uh, and applying image and sound processing algorithms. The system consists of two sections above and under the water. On shore or placed on a buoy or is a fully autonomous photovoltaic uh, panel system and batteries uh, that provide electricity to the solution. 
There is also an RD240 router providing internet via 4G network, uh, which further travels underwater through the fiber optic cable. The underwater section consists of five cameras and a switch. All cameras send video streams in real time for processing. Uh... And we have a technical issues with Andres. Uh, so maybe just I will continue uh, until he back with RMS part. And from that point, Andres will continue with the Asian, what you want to tell with Asian treasures. So let me show what I want to bring you with my presentation about the RMS. You see that uh, our products with internet technology enabled various number of use cases. Metaltonica Networks has an RMS system which can add even more uh, use case ability and help companies to establish their systems in the field. Uh, and RMS con currently con consists of these main four parts, management. With it, all Teltonica routers can manage remote, can be managed remotely with ease. So you don't need to worry about any issues about communication or etc. Uh, the connect part is designed to grant access for third party devices that like desktops, web UIs, terminals, etc. You mentioned it. And on top of that, it has all integrated integrated tools in RMS web. So you don't have to worry about any software, additional in your PC or etc. Then late, lately we have introduced the VPN service. With this feature, you can expand the accessibility of the third party devices without the limits. If uh, Connect has uh, integrated tools, which maybe limits some protocol uh, accessibility, VPN just eliminates that. And the, lim the sky is limit in this place. And if you're working with PLCs or other stuff, just use it VPN and you have remote access to all devices. Lastly, we have the VPN with, oh, sorry, <laughs> uh, we have an API. API allows to integrate RMS in your system and have all required functionality at the one place. So you don't have to switch it between two free systems. With RMS API, you integrate parts of RMS which you want and you wish to have in your system. But it's enough about RMS and let's see how RMS might help, can help in various use cases. Uh, the first use case is smart traffic light system. During the COVID pandemic, travels between countries were restricted, but infrastructure projects had to be continued. And for one of our clients, the challenge became clear. Uh, how to get an expert assistance for calibration process of whole smart traffic light system in busy crossroad during this difficult time and apparently the solution was pretty simple. Uh, they just have to use our router and RMS VPN. For this, traffic system controller was connected with our router to become available in local network. However, it was only accessible by local engineers in that network. The next step was to establish secure remote access with tunneling. For this part, RMS came to help. With it, client created a tunnel between router of local network and expert PC abroad the country. From that point, engineer had the same access as it would be locally and can see all the various information of sensors, of what's happening with the lights itself, was able to access the main PC and configure it and calibrate uh, the system and prepare all smart, smart traffic lights despite the distance. You can see that this, first of all, solved the issue of not possible to access directly and be, being uh, away from 
the system itself. Second part, it saved the costs of integrator and the company which supplying the goods for integration part. So RMS VPN can do this part easily even in your uh, solutions. The other interesting part was that it's not a secret the device can hang up and stop performing. Even the greatest names like Cisco has the situations. And in that cases, when your network is down or the device is down, you have quite an issue where you must either send engineer to place and, and perform direct tasks with that device. For example, just turn it on and off or perform reboot, or you have to hold the staff at the place, which is quite expensive. And how to solve it? Uh, one of our clients has looked at this issue quite differently uh, and how to. He took one of our best-selling devices, Route 955, since it has serial communication and connected it to Cisco device console port using RS-232 interface. In that case, he gained access of Cisco or landline failure over LTE in any condition. So can easily check what is happening with the device. Is it just issue with device or is issue related to network? And how that was done? Well, again, RMS came to help. With RMS management part, you have full access to router uh, itself, our router itself. For example, web UI, common line interface, etc. And in this case, the common line interface was used over RMS. Since our routers are full packed of features like microcom or other terminal communication part, the engineer of the company was able to establish communication through our router common line interface to Cisco console and check what is happening with it, check its logs and perform necessary, necessary tasks like reboot, uh, which required to restore network functionality. The simple and elegant solution allowed to reduce network downtime and of course save a maintenance cost in for our client. Lastly, I want to present one of quite growing market is the parcel terminals. Uh, this, this, this section is growing constantly since we see more and more people sending their parcels from to parents, to grandparents and businesses are already providing this uh, service of providing parcels remotely via online shopping. And this service quality must be, must be ensured every time. With RMS, such operators can benefit as well. Since these terminals must be equipped with routers uh, to have internet connectivity for simple tasks like entering codes and authenticating the user or just see have access to CCTV cameras. You do not have to change anything to get RMS Connect access and gain remote, uh, so remote access to terminals main computer. With this uh, part, uh, responsible personnel can easily perform routine tasks like firmware or application updates, check logs, what is happening with the terminal, a complete maintenance test during the work of hours. And of course, respond quickly to occurred issues or any unexpected situations. All this can be done using RMS Connect with again, integrated tools like SSH, F, uh, HTTPS, and others, uh, remote desktop tools, and all other integrated parts in RMS. Using Teltonica Network's remote management system, a company can easily reduce its service downtimes, save costs on maintenance and on-site traveling, what finally end up as better end user experience. 
And that's it about my presentation. And I see that Andres is back, so it might take place back. All right, thank you very much, Thomas, for covering me. Sorry, everybody, that, uh, oh, come on, it was the most interesting use case, uh, I think, and uh, just, you know, something went wrong, but it happens, it happens. Now I'm sharing my winter screen, so uh, give me one second. I will try to share what, what I need to share, okay? All right, uh, we are back to the track, and uh, basically, I've told you everything about this topology, but uh, what I wanted to show you again is uh, pictures, 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 and pictures. Uh, these are uh, the real, you know, pictures, no, not not Photoshop or something like that. Uh, you can see how this solution looks like in the real life. I know that it, it you know, it, it seems complex, but it's not so, such a complex solution as, as you think it is. Uh, we are very happy that we have partners who are sharing these pictures with us. And I hope that uh, all of you have different use cases, different application scenarios, and you can easily share them with, with us, with me, uh, with our company. And we can write a story about, about your success case together with you. Uh, take marketing um, I know, campaign, use marketing campaigns, social media campaigns. And going back to this topology, I just wanted to tell you the benefits, uh, what are um, use, using one of our products like our T240 or others. So uh, the broad input power range allows connecting those photovoltaic directly to the router. Uh, you can find uh, what voltage supports our products in our data sheets. Uh, also the small size makes it perfect for easy installation solutions where space and weight are limited like in this use case. Uh, furthermore, a wide operating temperature range from uh, minus 40 degrees Celsius to 75 degrees Celsius. And the humidity levels from 10 to 90% makes it suitable for use on, on those buoys or you know close to the water. And basically that's it, that's it, what I wanted to share with you. And uh, I think we can uh, review some of the questions and what I need to do right now is just to skip a few slides, uh, which Thomas was speaking about, about the RMS, again, some pictures, uh, topologies, uh, and uh, our social media channel. So uh, I hope that all of you are uh, following the, following us. And if you need any support, you can use Crowd Support Forum or our wiki base where you can find also my marketing material, not only our website. And now I can just review some of the questions, but I have one small problem that uh, when I had that technical problem and uh, just I was kicked out of the webinar, I do not see many of those questions. <laughs> I see only uh, two questions. So I think Marius, my colleague will help me with that. Absolutely. And, you know, hey, everybody, and uh, thanks for sticking with us through some technical difficulties. You know, a Windows blue screen of death uh, happens, uh, well, once in a while for everybody, I guess. Um, but uh, uh, regarding questions, we have not, uh, we don't have so uh, that many. Uh, so let's just address uh, the few. Um, one person was inquiring, can RMS be white labeled? And in true Teltonica networks fashion, <laughs> we say it, uh, just simple yes. Um, we can uh, white label RMS. We can white label our devices. We, you know, we believe in um, you know high flexibility level for for uh, for our devices and you know everything that we offer. Um, and um, there was a simple question about the RUTX14. Uh, does it have only a dual SIM with a single modem or does it have a dual modem? So uh, just to clear things out, the RUTX14 offers a single uh, LTE Cat12 modem. Uh, whereas if you're looking for a dual modem device, you should take a look at RUTX12. Now, Paolo is inquiring, do we have any plans for devices working with low power protocols like LoRa? Um, it is quite a frequent question that we get. 
but to tell you the truth in our um, you know short term uh, roadmap, we don't have anything with um, low power protocols such as LoRa or Zigfox. Um, essentially, we try to not get involved a lot with uh, protocols and uh, wireless transmission methods that are not, uh, let's say, fully embraced by the uh, telecom operators in a traditional sense. Um, because in the past, uh, we had you know, not so perfect experience with um, what was that technology, Andrus? It was WiMAX. WiMAX, yes. So, you know, like all of these uh, low power uh, protocol technologies, they, they offer, uh, you know, uh, continuous growth. They offer, um, you know, unmatched flexibility in comparison to the traditional ones. But um, in the past, we, we thought so about WiMAX as well, but um, it didn't go so well, <laughs> just, just to say the least. It didn't take off in terms of the um, popularity. And that's why we, we stay kind of cautious uh, when it comes to LoRa, ZigFox, uh, ZigBee, and, and similar low-power protocols. So no uh, plans for, uh, at least for the short-term uh, roadmap with uh, these sort of connectivity options. Um, regarding um, simply uh, low-power um, connectivity options, we stick to LTE M1 and uh, NB-IoT. I see that Thomas is answering Jefferson's uh, question. Thomas, perhaps uh, let's just do it live if you don't mind. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I think it will be way more efficient than timing me out. Uh, so, uh, what are the ways uh, to reboot Dalton Kratos remotely? So, we have several ways for this. Uh, and the main would be, I think, the free. The, so, the first one is go with RMS since it has this functionality and you can easily just press a few buttons and reboot router over RMS. Uh, then of course you can send an SMS message since by default our, all our routers has quite a number of SMS utility rules. And with that, you can simply authenticate yourself via SMS and reboot device. Other ways to, of course, using the call so you can just call into router's SIM card number and of course just reboot it that simply. And of course, lastly, if you are do if you do have um, a public IP address, uh, you can simply go and log in to router terminal via SSH and just enter reboot command and then router will reboot. Okay, so we have more questions and uh, both of them are about uh, what will happen in the future. And what is about, uh, one question is about, uh, uh, okay, we have three questions about the future. Everyone loves future. Okay, so the first one is the pipeline for POE on our routers. In the future, we are planning to have it but I cannot tell you if it's in a short term or a long term. Another question, are there plans for use cases with TSB products in future? Um, we have them already and in the future we will have more of them. And the third question, if there's any plans regarding 5G router? Uh, yes, we have plans about it. And I think next year, Maybe if I do not want to lie, but I think. Yeah, yeah I mean, 5G is such a mm, big topic nowadays, right? And uh, since we get lots of questions, I'm always happy to, you know, share a little bit more insight about our plans for, um, you know, making this technology as, uh, you know, approachable and uh, uh, as available as, um, uh, as with our 4G devices. So, the thing with 5G is um, it's expanding very similarly like 4G did. First, it starts at the you know, city centers, going at a diff uh, bigger radius, even bigger radius, and eventually it's going to have a really good coverage. But uh, at the moment, even though in some parts of the world uh, it's more developed than in others, um, 
it's not as popular to make the prices of 5G modules um, reach a reasonable level. Add to that a global uh, component, electronic component crisis, and it makes the 5G product at the moment not the most efficient um, way uh, to connect things for IoT or industrial IoT applications. So in the background, we're doing all the R&D work that needs to be done to launch a 5G product once uh, it's ready, but more importantly, once the market is ready uh, to pay the price that it's going to cost. Because at the moment, 5G products, uh, well, in my personal opinion, um, are not coming at the price point that is viable for widespread adoption. And, um, and 4G, depending on the quality of service, can offer truly you know, incredible speeds, uh, combining uh, carrier aggregation, combining uh, you know, different LT categories, or combining even uh, two um, CAT 12 routers, which is entirely doable and way less expensive than current uh, 5G products. So I just wanted to um, give a little bit more insight into uh, our opinion on this technology, which is definitely going to be and evolve into um, probably the most important product line when it comes to cellular devices from Teltonica networks. Um, there was a question about a USB uh, test, um, tethering. Um, I don't know, Thomas, if you're up for uh, discussing this one. Um, I think we'll have to talk about r and about this part. So let's leave it uh, after the session and we an provide the answer about this um, in our Q&A session in our website. Okay, so uh, guys, thank you very much for joining here today with me. Uh, thanks my colleagues, Marius, Thomas and Tadas, who's in the background answering some of the questions, uh, but he didn't want to show his face. I know why, he, he's beautiful, you know. Uh, okay, and thank you everyone for joining this webinar. I hope in the future, uh, more of you will join it. Um, I think the next webinar, I do not want to lie, but I think it will be even more interesting than this one. Uh, maybe with some of our partners live. Uh, again, thank you very much and uh, keep in touch. And uh, we will upload the recording and Q&A session to our website and YouTube channel. So just if some one of your friends, colleagues didn't have a possibility to join this webinar today, you will have a possibility to watch it together. So thanks again and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.